Pete Hegseth, co-host of Fox and Friends Weekend, great to have you in focus. So the White House had said they were begging the president not to touch anybody, no handshakes, no fist bumps, nothing. <laughs> but he went on and did that and had like all sorts of health challenges during the, remember the coughing that he, at East Jerusalem Church, so on and so forth. So it was a struggle and he definitely did touch the crown prince with a bump. Sure did. Uh, so they made up a COVID protocol, which was too cute by half, so they could avoid shaking the hand of the crown prince. But then Joe Biden shakes the hand of Bibi Netanyahu and the prime minister of Israel. And they, once he got to, to Saudi Arabia, the reality is here comes the fist bump, which looks a lot more intimate. So, we, so Joe Biden comes back to the White House in the middle of the night and says, can't you guys ask me about something that matters? Well, if something that mattered had happened on the trip, we would be talking about it. Instead, what happened was the weakness of America was on full display, unfortunately. So Joe Biden says he confronts him on the crown prince. He's contradicted while Joe Biden is flying home to the United States. Mm. Joe Biden says we made a breakthrough for, with flyover rights over Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia says that has nothing to do with Israel. Uh, there was nothing of substance there. Joe Biden leaves uh, Palestinian areas. What do they do? Missiles are fired just moments after he leaves. So from top to bottom on the trip, uh, words were said uh, that didn't match the reality of the policies being pursued, chief mm -hmm. amongst them, that the reason, Harris, we, we were going to meet with Saudi Arabia was not about oil production, except it turns out the administration wanted to tout more oil production, well, and the yeah. crown prince said, you're only going to get a little bit. Uh, so it really was about oil to begin with. We have no foreign policy. We look weak on the foreign stage. So yes, we are talking about a fist bump at this point. Well, and you wonder why his approval ratings are now dipping to so far low. It's because people can't trust him. He, he doesn't do what he says he's going to do in those big instances, and the world can see it. That's an example that you just gave. The other is on the economy and inflation that's transitory, according to his administration. All right, a Washington Post <laughs> op-ed argues that dealing with dictators is part of the job. President Obama bowed to Saudi Arabia's King Abdullah. I don't know if you could use that as your defense, because that didn't go well either. The Post no. also pointed to Harry Truman shaking hands with Joseph Stalin. Yeah, Joseph Stalin and Richard Nixon with Mao Zedong. Here's a quote. Columnists can hurl thunderbolts of outrage from on high, but moral purity is a luxury that no leader of a great nation can afford. Every president has had to pursue both America's ideals and its interests, and often they are at odds. Pete. Uh, we're going to meet with people we don't like. The question is, what is the disposition of it? Are we coming in a position of strength, pursuing steely-eyed and realpolitik, the interest of the American people, or do they know we're coming hat in hand? Remember when Donald Trump arrived in Saudi Arabia? He arrived in Saudi Arabia saying, we're going to produce our own oil so we're less dependent on you. Foreign wars won't be dictated by your interest. You're going to help us confront Iran. And oh, by the way, we're on the cusp of some Abraham Accords that Saudi Arabia probably would be a part of right now. Donald Trump met with Kim Jong-un. Why? Not because he has a good human rights record, but because he thought engagement could lead to denuclearization on the Korean Peninsula. Confronting our enemies, talking to them, can be important if it's in pursuit of our interests. But coming hat in hand, like we have, only pushes them in other directions and away from things that serve our interests. So, the Washington Post is very invested in the story of Khashoggi. Understandably. But you're not going to be able to, understandably, but you're not going to go to Saudi Arabia and change their human rights record, a, a theocratic Islamist uh, country. It's not going to happen. So what can we get from them that benefits us? And the biggest thing we could do is Joe Biden going to Texas and North Dakota and oil yeah. producing states to unleash our energy so we don't have to make these trips. And drop by the border while you're down there. Anyway. Uh, yeah. Right. The New York Post reporting that Hunter Biden met with his father at least 30 times at the White House or the vice president's residence, often just days after he had returned home from those overseas business trips that are such a focal point. That's according to information recovered from the infamous Hunter Biden laptop. The meetings happened between 2008 and 2016 and raised all sorts of questions about whether Hunter Biden was relaying messages to his dad on behalf of foreign clients. All of this casting new doubt on the president's repeated denials that he had in any role in his son's overseas business dealings. Here's Congresswoman Elise Stefanik.
We intend to investigate. Uh, we've already uh, made those document requests, and we are not going to hesitate when it comes to utilizing our subpoena power because, again, the American people deserve accountability and deserve an investigation to what I believe is the Biden crime family. You have the entire Joe Biden family profiting personally off of Joe Biden's position when he was a sitting vice president. That is unacceptable in America. Well, even Bleach can't clean it up because Hunter left that laptop at the maintenance shop. <laughs> Biden family happy to meet with uh, shady regimes when it benefits their family business. Uh, it advances their family business prerogatives. This is not a Hunter Biden scandal. This is a Joe Biden scandal. And when you look at these trips, this is not, oh, a couple of weeks later he happened to be. It was visits country A, Hunter Biden, for business meetings. Two days later, visits the vice president. Visits shady country B, three days later, goes to visit the vice president. Hunter Biden was the Biden family business consigliere because mm. politics was an avenue to enrichment for the Biden family. And the New York Post was suppressed while just trying to tell the basic part of this story in the middle of our election in 2020. It's taken this long to unravel this laptop that they still have not denied, that Biden's can't deny it, it is his, and shows that type of interaction. Made the Republicans show a backbone and look into this in 2022. Our republic deserves to know whether our highest leaders are profiting off of connections the government has given them. Well, and, and potentially could be capitulating to something based on whatever leverage that they would think that Correct. they would have over our leaders. I mean, that's what endangers the rest of us. Uh, Pete Hexeth, thank you. Subscribe to the Fox News YouTube channel to catch our nightly opens, stories that are changing the world and changing your life. I'm Tucker Carlson tonight.